And this is part of the reason why Jay Powell is now looking to manage the economy rather than managing inflation, because the threat is that the economy will go into recession. The problem here is that when you get an economy running into recession, um, Keynesian economics says that government's got to step in and increase the deficit in order to support the economy. Yeah, but they're already at 130% to GDP and the foreigners are already backing off uh, buying more debt. So this is a real crisis. The US government's debt has been a contentious issue for decades, with each administration, regardless of its campaign promises, typically contributing to its increase once in office. Although the worst of the crisis appears to be over by 2024, the U.S. has been accumulating an average of $62,607 in debt every second, from January 1st to August 27th. At the beginning of 2024, the total American public debt stood at $33.96 trillion, rising to $35.25 trillion by late August. This year's projected $1.9 trillion deficit is the largest on record outside of significant national emergencies like World War II, the Great Recession, and the COVID-19 pandemic. To put it in perspective, in 2001, under President George W. Bush, total federal spending was $1.9 trillion, and the federal debt was $5.8 trillion. Unless a major reporting error is found or there is a substantial increase in borrowing, the situation by year's end may be less severe than the $1 trillion every 100 days projection which would result in a final annual tally of approximately $3.6 trillion. Frightened economists fear for the future because there's no sign that the rapid growth in deficit spending will stop. The nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office projected that the deficit will hit $2 trillion by the end of the year. By 2034, projections put the yearly deficit at $2.8 trillion. Alastair McLeod discusses the looming financial crisis triggered by the Western world's soaring government debt, which has now surpassed levels witnessed during World War II. He emphasizes the perilous debt trap where debt expansion outstrips income growth, a situation worsened by declining foreign investment and escalating inflation. Let's delve into the video to gain further insights. Before we begin, consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the bell icon to stay updated with the latest content. I mean, the level of uh, U.S. government debt is roughly 130 percent of GDP. Now, to put that in context, it has been climbing to that level in peacetime if you look at World War II, the most it ever got up to was 119%. In other words, the debt today is greater than it was with the war economy um, in uh, 1946. Now, that is extremely important. Um, the reason it's a debt trap, uh, a debt trap occurs when uh, the uh, growth in your income, and it doesn't matter whether it's a government or individuals or a company, when the growth of income is less than the growth of debt, and obviously the growth of debt includes the interest which is being rolled up. Um, now, that is now the situation again. We had this during um, uh, the uh, great financial crisis, but, you know, when Lehman went bust. We had it in COVID, obviously, um, and we were just sort of getting our heads above water, or at least America was getting its head above water in, in terms of the debt trap, before we then started um, going down into that situation where income was not exceeding, if you like, the growth in debt. The growth in income was not exceeding the growth in debt. So, uh, and the reason for that basically is you've got to slow down in the US economy. Um, you've also got inflation. Um, and one way or another, um, the foreigners aren't really buying your debt. I mean, we've got China is not buying for uh, her reasons and nor is Japan. So um, the foreign involvement in acquiring debt, while since I suppose the Lehman crisis, um, their holdings in U.S. Treasuries have doubled. In fact, um, the percentage of publicly held debt in foreign ownership has actually fallen from just under 50% to just under 30%. So they're just not participating in the growth of your debt. Now, um, we're now talking about a situation where um, foreigners um, are going to get less, if you like, in return for lending money to the US government because interest rates will be lowered. And this was clearly signaled um, at Jackson Hole by uh, uh, Jay Powell. 
Um, and I, thought, I think that's, that is a huge, huge mistake. And already we can see the effect on the dollar. The dollar has entered on, on a chart, something called the death cross, where the price is below the 55-day moving average and the 55-day moving average is crossed below the 250-day uh, moving average. All these, um, you know, the price and average is all declining. That is a death cross. It's a very, very bearish signal. And you can understand why. And you know, so, I mean, the other side of it, of course, is gold. And this is why gold is going so well. I mean, under, under the gold price, you have um, a golden cross, which is the reverse of the death cross. So, you know, you, you sell dollars, buy gold. I mean, it's actually as simple as that. But returning to the debt problem, um, this means that the debt is going to grow to the point where it just basically becomes um, impossible to fund. And the only way in which it can be funded is for interest rates to rise substantially and at the same time for the government to cut its spending and to ensure that its budget is bal in balance. Now, here we are ahead of um, a presidential election in the presidential election year, and um, there's absolutely no hope of that, that is for sure. There's probably very little hope of it um, if what the two main contenders say about their policies come about. There's absolutely no hope of this happening in the next year or two. The U.S. dollar remains the world's dominant currency, but its status is increasingly questioned amid rising geopolitical fragmentation, trade and financial disputes, and populist pushback against globalization in many Western democracies. Since 2010, the U.S. has expanded its use of sanctions, leading critics to argue that it has weaponized the dollar, particularly when imposing sanctions unilaterally without the backing of allies. In response, countries like China and Russia, along with their allies, are striving to conduct banking and trade in their own currencies, seeking to distance themselves from U.S. oversight. McLeod warns that the U.S. dollar is in a precarious position, with rising interest rates and a potential recession contributing to economic instability. He critiques the government's policies, particularly the approach to unrealized capital gains taxes, as a manifestation of the broader problem of currency devaluation. Now, let's redirect our attention to a video. The driver of inflation is actually budget deficit and consumer borrowing um, to fund consumption. Those are the things that drive up prices, or if you like, put the other way around and more accurately, drive down the purchasing power of the currency. And that is exactly the situation we still have, and it's gonna get worse, particularly from the government end. And when you look at uh, consumer behavior, savings in America have collapsed, They're, they've gone negative. So, you know, this is, this is a disaster for the economy where you have got a combination of a debt problem, you have got um, a, you know, a nasty recession, potentially a nasty recession, and I would actually call it a slump in the early stages of development. And on top of that, rising prices or a loss of purchasing power in the currency. This is the worst possible stagflationary scenario. Now we had this back in 1976, and in 1975 actually, sterling collapsed against the dollar, it went down to around about, I think, a um, dollar 10, you know, roughly where it got to in recent history, um, maybe even a bit lower than that. Um, and uh, uh, America um, came in and loaned us money in order to save the currency, which was fine. But obviously the condition was that the IMF come in, the IMF repays America, the IMF puts in, uh, uh, um, controls, requirements, and all the rest of it, uh, which takes it away from the politicians. And this is exactly what happened. The IMF said, right, you've got to balance your budget. Um, don't care. You raise your taxes, however you do it, but you've got to have a balanced budget. Um, and uh, in order to fund um, the situation, interest rates rose to the point where we had three bond issues of 15, 15 and a quarter, and 15 and a half percent. Now, the problem that America faces is that there isn't someone like the IMF to come along and rescue them. I mean, it's just not there. Because <laughs> apart from anything else, you own the IMF. I mean, figuratively speaking, the IMF um, might account in SDRs, but basically it's a, it's a dollar-based organization. And it's not in a position to rescue the dollar. 
So you've got um, you you have a situation which is worse than we are we had potentially in 1976 when we were funding at 15 and a half percent coupons. Just imagine what that does to the U.S. economy. Is it avoidable? I think not. Why? Because of the debt trap. And I think, you know, we've talked on this channel um, uh, so frequently about the dangers in the banking system, um, zombie companies, uh, and, you know, all these things, um, geopolitics, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But I think the one thing which, um, above anything else, will end the fiat currency system is actually the collapse of the dollar because of the debt trap which it is now entering into in uh, just big time, absolutely big time. America's national debt hit a record $35 trillion last month. The government's spending addiction is well known, but it exploded during the Biden administration to more than $25 trillion in almost four years. During the eight-year-long Obama administration, it was $29 trillion. Rich Dad, Poor Dad author Robert Kiyosaki, renowned for his financial insights, took to the social media platform X to warn about the U.S. economy highlighting that the country accrues a trillion dollars in debt every 100 days. With no end in sight to deficit spending, economists warn that a fiscal crisis could be approaching. So why aren't Vice President Kamala Harris or former President Donald Trump talking about it? Share your feedback in the comments below. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up and subscribe to keep up with our latest updates. We appreciate you being a part of this journey.